Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jacana Show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we talk about climate, climate, and more climate. Today, we're going to be talking about India and their climate change. We have a special, special guest today, Richie Hoagie. That's all right, everybody. Hold your bro. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Good to all see right, you. man. Anytime, anytime. All right, Richie, could you tell us a little bit more about um, India's current position on international climate change agreements, please? Well, Jabril, that's a great question because India is part of so many different global climate change agreements. Uh, to start, they ratified the Paris Agreement and are still a member today. Uh, they're also part of the Kyoto Protocol, and they have been since the start for a, and for a while now. So it's a really big uh, climate change agreement. Uh, India also wrote last year to the UN's Climate Secretary, um, agreeing to be listed as uh, one of the parties part of the Coquigan Accord, which is another climate change agreement uh, globally. And uh, their leader, Narendra Modi, has committed by, that by 2030, at least 40% of the country's electricity will be generated from non-fossil fuel resources. And that's something that they agreed with, with the UN, um, that they're hoping to get other countries to agree to as well. So that's kind of something they're nice. starting. And they're taking initiative in these climate change agreements, which is really good. That's amazing. That's amazing. Right. Guess what today is? It's hump day. Woo -woo! Ronnie, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico? I'd say happier than a camel on Wednesday. Hump day! Get happy. Yeah. Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Welcome back to the Jaclima Show. We have a new guest here. Welcome him, everybody. Skylar Lev. Welcome, 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 welcome. Nice one. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. you. Um, real quick, I would just like to ask, what is India's current greenhouse gases emissions? And can you relate it to world, please? Here's your question. I'd like to start off by saying how uh, the unit used to determine the greenhouse gas emissions is called the metric ton carbon dioxide equivalent. Mm -hmm. And so now knowing that India's current total greenhouse gas emissions, excluding land use as of 2012, consists of about 3,013 metric ton carbon dioxide equivalent. And uh, India's current total greenhouse gas emissions. <laughs> now uh, India's current total greenhouse gas emissions, including land use, uh, as of 2012, consist of about 2,887 metric ton carbon dioxide equivalent. And uh, we can really see that what they're doing with their deforestation is reducing their greenhouse gas emissions. And so now, um, relating to the world, India represents about 6.56% of the world's total greenhouse gas emissions. Wow. But it's a pleasure, pleasure being on the show. And Appreciate your time. Doing. Thank you, everybody. Round of applause. Welcome back to the Jaclima Show. Yes, it's not over yet. We have another guest. Yes, three times, three times, baby. Another guest. Welcome to the show, Emmett. Emmett. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Nice it's to meet you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. Love. All right, Emmett. So, can you explain to me what are the current problems of climate change that we know of right now? That's going on in India, please. All right, so the other thing we've been seeing is glaciers have started to retreat faster than they usually have. Um, and the next big thing is sea level rise. For the southern latitude of India, they're actually below um, sea level. And so it started to um, affect large populations when it comes to large flooding. Um, and a big thing is agriculture in India, and one of their biggest crops is uh, wheat. And they've seen 6% lower rice yields due to high temperatures and no rain. Um, wheat, yield, uh, wheat yields peaked in 2001, mm -hmm. and they haven't been able to go higher than what they've been able to produce since then. Wow. Um, and India's two main resources of energy is hydro and thermal. Both um, rely on water. And since this high temperature and non um, consistent rainfalls, it's, we've started to lose the thermal energy and it's, it's starting to become, um, harder to get energy as well compared to what it's been in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, India is already facing, um, water security and with growing populations, it's not helping as well. You know, they've started to see other, um, diseases such as malaria, um, and vector borne diseases, which, is just a terrible problem and hopefully in the future we can 
fix that. So now that we know about what is going on in India, can you tell us about more about what could happen now? Yeah, so so what could happen is that um, there's going to be more frequent hot spells, um, four degrees Celsius, warmer temperatures in the southern part of India, um, which is going to have a large impact on agriculture. Um, unpredictable monsoons um, can lead to major droughts or major flooding. Dry years are supposed to happen um, in the north coast and the southeast coastal region. They're supposed to get um, more rain and hotter temperatures than usual. Um, crop, yields, crop yields are actually supposed to um, drop significantly. Um, falling water tables, which is an um, effect you know the energy sources that we talked about um and you know those are the main things that um what it could happen in our future for india all right so ladies and gentlemen this is my segment my own segment thank you um of the show where i did my own research about current actions and policies from the country of india that are designed to mitigate and or adapt to climate climate change all right policies contributing to climate mitigation um are India actually in June of 2008 um, released India's first national action plan on climate change which identified eight national missions running through 2017 which is a five-year plan from 2012 to 2017. In May of 2014 the Prime Minister um, also renamed the Environment Ministry and renamed it to the Ministry of Environment um, followed by that the newly reconstituted Prime Minister's Council on Climate Change launched a new initiatives on wind energy, coastal zone management, health, and waste to energy. Lastly, India's National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency implements the Perform, Achieve, and Trade, aka PAT, mechanism covering the country's largest industrial and power generation facilities. All right, so Skylar, can you please explain any planned actions or policies from the country of India that are designed to mitigate and or adapt to climate change, please? Yeah, so there's uh, several plans of action that are uh, gonna be occurring in the next couple of years, but uh, right now we have the National Action Plan on Climate Change, the NAPCC, which helps India adapt to climate change. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was first created on June 30th, 2008. Mm -hmm. um, and then almost one year after it was announced, we started seeing a good amount of changes, but uh, it runs through 2017 and uh, and so one, uh, one example of this is the uh, NAPCC recommends mandating specific energy consumption decreases in large energy consuming industries. So uh, this is gonna help try to decrease the amount of energy that is being used. And uh, with a system for companies to trade energy saving certificates for uh, something in return, so it gives them a little initiative to, to uh, decrease their energy consumption. Mm -hmm. So now, um, you know how the NAPC also aims at uh, promoting energy efficiency. So what they're doing right now is strengthening the enforcement of automotive fuel economy standards mm -hmm. and using price measures to encourage the, the purchase of efficient vehicles and initiatives for the use of public transportation. The NAPCC aims to support climate change and uh, adaption in agriculture through the development of climate resistant uh, crops, mm -hmm. expansion of weather insurance mechanisms, yep. and agriculture practices. Fantastic. All right, so Richie, can you please give me an assessment on whether or not you feel your country of India is doing a great enough job to mitigate or adapt to this the, the climate change going on right now? You know, Jabril, overall, I think that they're doing a phenomenal phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. They're part of many global climate tra change treaties, as I have spoken about before. Mm -hmm. They've also set goal many goals to reduce emissions by certain time periods. And certainly they're seeing the effects of it, um, similar to many of the things Emmett was talking about. And if they want to get rid of those uh, negative effects of their poor emissions, they're going to have to fix the fix the things that they're doing wrong, which they're certainly doing because of the treaties and because of the goals they set. So I see good things for India in the future as far as climate change goes. Wonderful, wonderful. It's February. It's February. All right. All right. We good? Mm -hmm. Ready? All right. So next time on the Jaclyma Show. Even though it's February right now, I'm thinking about summer. I'm ready for summer. You know what I'm saying? All the, the sundresses, the bikinis, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready. So we're going to be talking about summer weather, baby. The weather, baby. Holla at me. Let's go.